Hey there, you beautiful art nerds, and welcome back to my channel. I am Didi Mark, and you already know what's going on. Why? Because y'all read the title already. You know, that being said, I'm gonna do y'all a favor, and I'm gonna do myself a favor, and get right into the juicy meat and potatoes of today's video, which is I, Didi Daddy Mark, will be blessing you with five quick tips on improving your art. Well, more specifically, your drawings. Now, now, if you're a regular here on the DD Mark channel, you already know how much I emphasize how there's no such thing as shortcuts in improving your art. And I always say how getting better as an artist and drawing comes with hard work and dedication. That being said, I know I call these quick tips and in a sense they are shortcuts, but not in a way where if you start doing them today, your art will drastically improve overnight. No, it won't. These tips are more so things that aren't said enough around the art community. They are things that many artists don't do or tools many artists don't make use of and it might hinder their growth. Or even a better way of looking at these tips is you can think of it as quick tips that will put you in a better position to improve as fast as you can or just help you save time when drawing without sacrificing and even often improving quality. I hope that made sense. So yeah, there are shortcuts and quick tips, but they're also not, it's kind of hard to explain. Just watch the video and listen to the tips and you'll see what I mean. But yeah, let's get into these quick tips, art nerds. Tip number A is try holding your pen or paintbrush or whatever differently. Now upon first hearing that tip, you might think that makes a lot of sense or you might think it sounds really dumb, <laughs> but hear me out, okay? In one of the videos I made recently, I think I talked about how I watched videos of Yusuke Murata drawing and I noticed how he held his pen higher than I hold mine. So you know, I started holding my pen higher to emulate him. In that video where I talked about it, I said I felt a big difference in my work and I still mean that. You see, the thing that I felt improved my art wasn't the simple fact that I held my pen higher. What really happened is by holding my pen higher, my wrist, elbow and grip on my pen was a lot looser and that enabled me to draw more fluid motions and even sketch faster. Cause you know, I'm holding the pen so loose. On top of that, when I'm holding the pen higher and therefore looser, I'm not so heavy handed when I draw, which means I can draw for longer and not feel nearly as much pain from gripping my pen so long. And even in turn and turn, I'm not burning through my pen nibs. If you're a digital artist, <laughs> you know that pen nibs need to be replaced every now and then, and that's a pain when you run out of replacements. So yeah, to end this tip, essentially, I'm not saying hold your pen higher like I do, I'm just saying consider holding it looser. That way, at the very least, you can have more fluid, confident sketches, as well as fluid poses and action poses. And yeah, that's tip one. For tip letter two, this one is more for digital artists, but it's make use of the perspective ruler. Boy, oh boy, the perspective ruler is, <laughs> it's cheating, bruh. It really is. I don't know about other softwares, but I'm a thousand percent sure Clip Studio has the perspective rulers. Why? Because that's what I use. I know they have it, but like, I'm pretty sure Photoshop has it too. I think Photoshop calls it perspective grid or whatever, but essentially when it comes to the perspective ruler, I really started using them like late last year for backgrounds. And there certainly is a learning curve to it. For example, you need to have a more than, and I do mean have a more than strong knowledge of one point, two point, and three point perspectives. But once you do, the perspective ruler is basically cheating backgrounds, bruh. Like, <laughs> like if you're a comic artist, I absolutely strongly recommend you study perspectives and get on the perspective rulers because a perspective ruler coupled with a vector layer and a vector eraser is basically speed running really good backgrounds. If you know what those things are, you know what I'm talking about, bruh. But yeah, another thing about the perspective ruler is I've been using it like a normie for like for like, you know, when I first started, I've been using it for only backgrounds, you know, since I started using it last year, but like recently, and I'm talking like really recent, like at the point of me recording this video, two weeks ago, I was studying Murata's action scenes, you know, like I always do, and I had an aha moment when I realized that Murata might be using the perspective ruler to draw motion on his characters when they're moving fast or, or throwing a punch or a kick or whatever for the most part. And at the time of me recording this, I've drawn many action scenes in Metal Souls, you know, my manga, where I use this technique. And at the point of me recording this video also, those pages aren't out yet, but when they do come out, 
y'all will see me using this technique and you can really see how good it looks on action. But yeah, I'm talking too much now. That's pretty much it for tip number two. Let's move on to the next one. For tip number three, it's make your own assets. What do I mean by this? Well, essentially, this is another time saving tip, meaning this is a tip that if you're a comic artist or you're an artist who draws something complex over and over again, this tip will save you a lot of time and effort. Essentially, what I mean by making your own asset is you don't need to do anything fancy like create assets on 3D softwares or some nerd shit like that. I just mean open a new file in your drawing software, you know, Clip Studio, Photoshop, whatever, and draw out whatever you know you're gonna use over and over again, you know? For example, let's say I have a character that has a uniquely complicated gun design and they have a complicated logo on their clothing. What you would do is in the new file, you would draw that gun and logo in as many angles as possible that you can, that you think you need, if that makes sense. Then once you do that, you never for the most part have to draw that thing again. All you need to do is if you're drawing that character in your comic book, for example, and you know, they have their gun and their logo is visible. All you need to do is open that other file where the assets are, you copy it from that file and paste it into the comic page. And you can use a transform tool or whatever to make it look right. Does that make sense? It's a huge time saver. And when you do this, you're not sacrificing any quality. I personally do this for the logo on the uniforms of my characters, as well as the rifles that they use. But you can also do this for window designs, door designs, clothing designs, decals on vehicles, vehicles themselves, and etc. But you get the point and there you go. That's it for tip three, baby. Let's move on to the next one. For tip number four, it's draw with your elbow, not your wrist, especially when sketching. I'm sure if you've been in the art community or watched enough art YouTube, you've heard this before. And yeah, it's true. So, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on it because enough has been said about it, right? So I'll just say, drawing with your elbow as opposed to your wrist make your lines more expressive. It also enables you to draw more quickly and loosely. Therefore, it saves time. Drawing with your elbow as opposed to your wrist, believe it or not, will make it so you're not so focused on details and the work will look finished with fewer lines than if you did with your wrist, you know, and that saves you time. Also, drawings done with your wrist tends to look stiffer as opposed to ones done with your elbow because when you're drawing with your elbow, your whole arm stays relaxed. There is also less risk of straining your wrist and getting carpal tunnel or something. So yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say for this tip. On to the next and final one. For tip letter five, it's do a quick small gesture of a pose, then blow it up to get more fluid movements and poses in your characters. So yeah, just like the last tip, I don't want to spend too long talking about this one. Essentially, this tip is taking advantage of gesture drawings, especially when you're a digital artist. If you don't know, one of the main points of doing gesture drawings is so you can get better at drawing more dynamic, fluid, and less rigid character poses and movements, especially when you have a good understanding of the concept called the line of action. If you're observant, you'll know whenever there's a video of me drawing a full body pose, I always start out doing a small gesture you know, to get a natural and non-stiff pose, then I select it with the selection tool on Clip Studio Paint and blow it up or increase it. And yeah, using that, I then ink over or sketch over it to get my dynamically posed non-stiff characters. And just so you know, I also do this when I'm drawing action as well. And yeah, that being said, those are five quick tips for improving your art and drawing by me, DD Mark. So yeah, let's run over all five tips just to refresh your memory. The first one is hold your pen differently. The second is use the perspective ruler. The third is make your own assets. The fourth is draw with your elbow and not your wrist. And the last one is do gestures of a pose, then blow it up.
So really quick before I end the video, I just want to let y'all know that these Saturday AM graphic novels that you're seeing on the screen are available for pre-order and they're going to be in bookstores around the world. So if you're a fan of and want to support creators like myself, like White Manga, who are trying to pioneer a form of manga industry here in the West, consider going to pre-order these books. And by pre-ordering these books, you'll be doing me as a Saturday AM artist myself a favor in the long run. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can pre-order the books if I remember. So go do that if you want. And yeah, thank you all for watching this video and making it this far. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by annihilating the like button. If you like these tips, I can definitely do more tips, you know, because <laughs> there's a lot. And yeah, I could make this a whole series if you want. Just let me know in the comments if you guys want that. Anyways, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't because that helps out my channel a lot. And also make sure to turn on that notification bell to get alerted when my dumb self drops a new video. And lastly, make sure to leave a comment because I, Diddy Mr. Stick Your Girl Mark, reads and responds to any and all comments. Till next time, art nerds. Peace and love, baby.